welcome children to social studies class children the topic which we are going to discuss today is from civics that is democracy and equality first of all we will study about what is democracy first of all you need to know about this term what is democracy okay then we will study about the key elements of the same then systems that represent democracy and in that we will study about one more important term that is universal adult franchise okay so let's go through it our first chapter from civics is democracy and equality let's start with that okay now when we begin with the chapter first of all you need to know what is the meaning of democracy democracy is a system in which the government of a country is elected by the people okay see here also in the first para it is written that the word democracy means rule by the people okay see there are different forms of government out of that one such form is democratic form of government okay and in which people govern themselves okay either they govern directly or through the representatives they elect for the purpose okay or we elect the representatives now this word democracy has derived from two greek words which are those two greek words demos and kratos demos means people and kratos means rule so rule by the people in 1860s president abraham lincoln of usa he defined democracy in this way government of the people by the people for the people now what does this mean it simply means that democracy is a form of government in which the rulers are elected by the people okay public elects the rulers the citizens of the country elect the government okay to rule the country and the elected government works for the welfare of the people okay so now i think this particular definition which is given by abraham lincoln okay is clear in your mind government of the people by the people for the people now next what they are telling see now children as i told you that there are different forms of government right now our country india has democratic form of government many other countries also have democratic forms of government but the form of government in our country is representative democracy representative democracy means in which people govern themselves through representatives we choose the representatives who will govern us the key elements of democracy they are discussing c the people's participation in government then the people's freedom to express their views and criticize the government we are free to express our views okay and the people's right to get equal treatment each and every person should be treated equally understood conflicts among the people are resolved according to the laws according to the laws which are framed the conflicts if there is any conflict among the people then it is solved according to the laws framed but each and every person should be treated equally okay the laws are same for all the people and in this chapter we will learn about the role of equality in a democracy systems that represent democracy now here what they are telling a democratic government works through a system of voting 
In representative democracy, there is franchise or the right to vote to elect representatives. There are also regular elections. You all know that our country has democratic form of government, right? So, here we choose our representatives, we elect our representatives through the process of voting, okay? The public has the right to vote. In the next paragraph, they are talking about a term franchise. Now, what is that? Let's see. Every democratic country has a fixed voting age. Each and every country which follows a democratic form of government, okay, we discussed in the first para that it follows the system of voting, right? But there is a fixed voting age. Now, what it is, see. In the second line, you see, in representative democracy, citizens who have reached the voting age are allowed to vote in elections to choose representatives who will form the government. So, the citizens who have reached the voting age, they are allowed, they have the right to vote, okay, in elections. And through that, they choose their representatives who form the government, If all adult citizens have the right to vote regardless of their race, religion, wealth, sex, etc., we say there is universal adult franchise. So, when do you say that there is universal adult franchise? When all adult citizens, adult citizens means they must have reached the voting age, then only they are allowed to vote. Okay, so all the adult citizens have the right to vote regardless Regardless means uski parva kiye bina kiski of their race, religion, wealth, sex, etc. We say that there is universal adult franchise. See in the next para what they are telling. What they are telling in the next paragraph is in India the voting age is 18 years. Okay, so if you are of 18 years and above, you have the right to vote, but not below that. Okay, and there is universal adult franchise. Now here they have explained you in detail that what is universal adult franchise. This means that all Indian citizens aged 18 years or above can vote. Okay, so all the citizens of India, okay, who are of 18 years, and above not below that okay they have the right to vote whether they are men or women rich or poor educated or illiterate now see this is very very important line listen to this very carefully so what they are telling is all indian citizens who have reached the voting age that means 18 years or above, they have the right to vote whether they are men or women, rich or poor, whether they are educated or illiterate, they have the right to vote. Also, they are telling that no Indian citizen of voting age can be stopped from voting. If there is an Indian citizen, okay, and he or she has reached the voting age, you cannot stop that person from voting on the grounds of race, religion, language or caste. Understood? So, in brief, let us discuss this whole topic. What they are trying to say is, in a democratic form of government, all citizens have the right to vote. But they must have reached the voting age. Okay, then only they are allowed to vote. Okay, through the elections, they choose their representatives who form the government. Now, in India, the voting age is 18 years. Okay, and all Indian citizens who are of 18 years or above, they have the right to vote. They can vote. Whether they are men or women, whether they are rich or poor, educated or illiterate, no one can stop them from voting. 
understood and no indian citizen of voting age can be stopped from voting on the grounds of race religion language or caste this is the most important thing which you have to remember next topic of discussion is regular elections now in a democratic country like our country the government is formed for a fixed period of time okay government is formed but that is for a fixed period of time after that fixed period of time again there are fresh elections if the people are satisfied with that particular government then they may vote it back okay to power so it is totally up to the public if they are already satisfied with the with that particular government then in the next elections that is the fresh elections the public has the right to vote back to that particular government if not they may change the government so if the public or if the citizens are not satisfied with the government then they have the right to change the government in india elections to the central and state legislatures are held at least once every 5 years so every 5 years fresh elections are conducted political parties now what is a political party children political party it is an organization it is an organization of people okay which people people who have similar views same views on political issues okay now every party has an aim which aim to contest and win elections and form the government and for winning the elections what they need to do they need to win people's support right in india there are many political parties in the next para they are discussing about ruling party and opposition now if any party children wins more than half the seats okay then it can form the government without sharing its power with anyone else okay and the party which is forming the government that forms the government that party is known as ruling party and the other parties form the opposition now this thing is clear in your mind that if a party wins a clear majority then it becomes the ruling party right as it forms the government but if no single party wins a clear majority then what then two or more parties come together and they form a government such type of government is called coalition government understood end of session hope you all enjoyed it see you in the next lecture